Yesterday's film, I thought uh, uh, the kids really did uh, probably uh, a little bit better than what I thought. Uh, I thought that uh, with all the blitzing and, and all the things we're doing, both sides of the ball, uh, I thought the kids uh, handled some things pretty well. Uh, and of course, as you pour more stuff in because you're just installing every day, there's going to be a few more mistakes, a lot of people thinking and so forth. But yesterday was, was probably a, after viewing practice, uh, uh, felt uh, uh, better than I anticipated. So I, I, I thought the kids, again, gave good effort. We've seen that on film and seen them do some good things. and. And uh, so I was pleased with it. They didn't blitz much last year. I mean, is that kind of a good thing that you can be like, okay, defensive guys, you know, go out there and have fun, come off the edge more? And well, it, it's it's a, a thing. And again, I think we'll see what we can do. Uh, we're going to install our philosophy, what we do, and then we got to see if we got the players that can play that philosophy. So, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of teaching, and uh, that doesn't mean we're going to be a blitz team every uh, every snap. We'll be what we can be, uh, but uh, we'll see what we can do, how we do uh, certain things, and and how our kids pick it up defensively, and and that's kind of what our goals were. If you remember, we got to find out who we're going to be next year, and so hopefully we'll be able to do that through 15 practices. And then two a day, up to, even through two a day camp, at the, till the very end, we'll say, okay, this is what we're gonna have to do. I know you've seen him on film and in your game last year, but your first impression of Dijon McKnight, uh, seeing him on the field. Well, I thought, I thought uh, after viewing film uh, last night, is that uh, I thought he practiced very well. I think he's uh, uh, slimmer, uh, maybe than he was a year ago uh, through the off season. And, uh, you know, I don't know, he caught, we, we threw the ball 51 times and, and passed shell and team at, like, yesterday, and, and he caught quite a few balls. And, uh, but his route running was very smooth and, and didn't make a lot of mental errors. And so uh, I was pleased with him yesterday. And then we'll have to see it through film today, but it looked like he did some good things. So uh, I think he's maybe a little bit more athletic than he was a year ago because his body's changed a little bit. Do you think Marcus Jones is the fastest guy on the team? I don't know. I don't know. Stoudemire's pretty quick. There's some, you know, he's certainly a good, he's certainly a good recruit, you know. I think there's no question about that. Uh, uh, we need that type of speed, so I, I'm pleased to pleased to see that. Yeah. Stoudemire's played wide receiver in the past. Do you, do you have any intention of giving him that opportunity, or is he going to stay as a – Oh, I think right now we, we feel like we got to get better on defense, and, and we're going to keep good players on defense. So uh, we'll keep him there and teach him. Now, does it doesn't mean we won't have a wrinkle or two and things of that nature. We'll have to see. I'll never say we never do something. Uh, but right now his focus during the spring will be uh, defense. Coach, is there one position where you feel more comfortable with your talent level right now? It's hard for me to make that statement right now until we go through some things. I, I think that uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of youth uh, on our whole football team and until you put pads on. Right now they're in the learning phase and trying to just get to point A to point B. But then when shoulder pads come on, sometimes I've seen a lot of guys without shoulder pads do some things pretty good and then all of a sudden they don't like to hit anybody. So it's hard to really evaluate what you have and what you don't have and so forth and so forth. But uh, uh, the one thing right now for two practices, we've had good learning attitude and uh, hopefully that continues. You talked about tailing your, your schemes to fit the player's skills a little bit, but what, in general, what's your comfort level with how much the quarterback will run in your offense and how, I mean, what do you, how much do you envision that? Well, well, you know, I always say we'll run enough to win, you know, whatever that may be. I don't know, again, uh, the guys that we have, we've got to see what they can do. Uh, we certainly uh, uh, don't want somebody that's going to be beat up by the second game of the year. Uh, there's got to be a balance there. Uh, you know, that's why you need depth in that position. Uh, so, uh, according to what who you have there, what your depth is, all that you know plays into a manner. You know, with Harnish last year, is that we. We, I mean, there's a couple games he had 160, 170 yards, and, and then we got worried about it a little bit, so we started playing a freshman some, you know, and, and ran him six or seven times. You know, instead of calling it the Wildcat, we just played the, the, the extra quarterback and took a little, you know, took some hits off of him because Chandler had had some injury problems before. So you just got to kind of find that balance and be smart, I think.
transfer? You talked a lot about Marquise's physical ability when you first saw him, and now that he's practiced a little bit. I know they don't have pads on, but when you see him run, the speed that he has. Oh, yeah, it, it, yeah. He is, he's an instinctive player. He's a football player. Uh, I think I've seen that from watching film uh, yesterday for a kid that hadn't played quarterback. You know, except in the, in the wildcat or whatever, is that uh, uh, he's got this natural instincts, and uh, he's got to learn about getting us in the right uh, uh, pass protection. He's got to get us in the right play and things of that nature. Uh, but for all the stuff that he's been thrown at him, and he's seen corner cad, he's seen linebackers roll down safeties, all that kind of stuff in two days. Um, you know, he he, he done. He surprised me a little bit, you know. Mentally, he's he's done a decent job. We'll we'll see. It's it's easy to do for two days, but as this thing goes and goes faster, you know, he's got to be. Able to keep it seems like it's still kind of a learning process for these guys. I mean, you know, a lot of times you're getting in their face and telling them just kind of well, learning habits and trying to get, get oh. things on straight. Well, yeah, we talk all the time about you know you want to create good practice habits because then it carries over into the game, and you want to make sure consistency every play. And one of the things is we're throwing a lot at them. Coach kills philosophy is get it in, throw it at them, and then, and then as we go, they're going to learn more and more about how to adjust and everything. So it isn't as though uh, the defense is out there running a vanilla defense and we're running one or two plays. Um, you know, the guys are a little bit on overload right now, but we kind of want to do that these first four or five practices. So then we're able to say, okay, now you got it in. Now we can see who adjusts to it the best. And then the last five practices or so, okay, who are the best guys that we're able to adjust and, and can excel in what we want them to do? I think one of the things these guys have responded to has been the, the energy level the coaches have shown. And is that important for you guys just to maintain that energy level throughout spring? I think so. I, you know, one of the things I think as a staff we talked about, and it kind of came to us during our time at Northern Illinois, is, is that, you know, a big part of this is to have fun. And so, you know, I know I end every meeting with, hey, we need to go on, we need to work hard, but let's have fun. Let's let's enjoy the process. And I think as coaches, we embrace that and we get out here and it's not all drudgery and all work. We can have a little fun while we do it, and I think that rubs off on the kids. Now, it'll be tough. We'll get into practice 11, 12, and there will be that re repetition. They won't want to be hitting each other. They won't want to be seeing the same coverage throwing in seven on seven. But at the same time, you know, Coach Kill is always telling us, hey, make sure you remember it's a game. Make sure they will they will respond better if you have fun as a coach, getting them to learn. They'll have more fun out there, and, and the whole process will move along a lot smoother. How are they responding to all the new stuff, do you think? Uh, I, I think that they are doing a great job. I think that uh, I think that they're they're real hungry. They want to be successful, and, and I think that uh, as coaches, uh, we're trying to develop that relationship to say, hey, just just sell out to us. Just believe in what we're telling you, and good things will happen. And, and I think they're they're really trying to do that. Now, you know, it's a little easy right now. We're not in equipment. You know, the the the, the temperature hasn't been risen, so to speak, uh, if that's a way to put it. But I think the big thing is is that. Uh, that that they, they can see what our plan is, and we include them in that plan. You know, they know how we're going to practice. They know what our demands are, and I think they appreciate that.